Welcome to the Drive Time News Blast. 30 minutes, 45 for patrons of news of the day from a perspective of truth, liberty, and justice. This is Monica Perez. And as I mentioned yesterday, Brad's taking a couple of days off, but we have our favorite substitute host, Cam Harless of We Are the Mad Ones. We are the Mad Ones, where I am a frequent guest. Yeah, you you are one of the ones, because I decided when I wanted to do a good show, what I was going to do is I was going to find my favorite people and feature them regularly because people like that connection. But you're going to be there next Wednesday, right after September 11th, so it should be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, lots and lots of fun. Um, I know tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of September 11th, and I have something to say about that. And the last big story of the Free 30, but the first big story of the Free 30, I want to talk about the aftermath of the story you brought yesterday, which was the headline of yeah. Biden, a couple of executive orders on vaccine mandates. What what they are is one executive order about federal employees, which I guess is in his, his purview to say that they must be vaccinated. And then there's another executive order that says that contractors and subcontractors are going to be beholden to or have to obey the safer federal workforce task force guidelines that will be coming out September 24th. People anticipate that's going to be a similar vaccine mandate. And then there is an OSHA rule that is expected soon from the Labor Department that they are telling us will say that companies with over 100 employees either have to vaccinate or have to test weekly. Now, these tests, the, the compliant tests, from what I understand, if they're the ones that I know people have to take, they can be over $100 each. I don't know who's going to foot the bill on that. They think there's going to be some testing capacity issues in some places. Maybe that will add pressure for uh, people to get vaccinated. I know that Biden said, I heard him say this, it makes me crazy when they say stuff like this. He said something to the effect of, my job as president is to protect the American people. And I really freaking hate that when they say that, because that isn't the job of the president. No, not, not, not at all. And you, the, the, speaking of the cost of the tests, um, my friend Nick who uh, he does a show called Misfit Family, uh, Nick Bacone. He works in a company, and he found out, I want to say last week, that uh, he and another guy were going to have to take these tests weekly. And so the company's kind of official stance was that it was going to come out of his pocket to pay for him and the guy underneath him. And so he bought about $1,000 worth of tests. I don't know what you know period of time that was over. But he did just car charge it to the company card. So I mean, that's yeah. Good. Oh, for sure. I, I would think you would have to do that. I do. Before we move on to more of this um, story, I did want to just read the oath of office to people because both on the left and the right in my years in radio, I would have people call me and they would always misconstrue what the purpose of the president was, what what his job was to justify what they wanted him to do. And I think that Obama and Trump were kind of the two worst of that in that they, they people who were ideologues became kind of personality logs and just wanted these guys to have as much power as possible. But of course that's a terrible precedent to set. So the oath of office of the president of the United States is I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will you choose which one you want to say. Uh, that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So the office of the president, you can read about it in the Constitution. It's the executive branch. It's supposed to execute laws. An executive order is, in my opinion, totally unconstitutional. He has no uh, responsibility to protect. He is the commander in chief when called into actual service. There's a process for declaring war. We don't do any of these things. Don't believe it when they say these are their jobs. They're not. Read the Constitution. It's amazingly in very plain English. Well, not to mention it's it's very detailed and enumerated as to the powers of the alleged 
federal government, but it's hilarious to hear presidents say that because you know that they're lying. Yes. One time I did a show and I was looking at uh, the Constitution. I just wanted to understand it better. And that's the first time. And I went to law school and I had graduated from law school and was a member of the bar. And I read it and I was like, oh, this is very easy. There are 18 enumerated powers. They're very, very clear. And those like, what would you do about Osama bin Laden? It's like, oh, it's a letter of mark and reprisal. He's a privateer. Mm -hmm. He's a or he's a or he's a government, in which case that's something different. So. I read all that. And then that's when I realized that the Bill of Rights is not a Bill of Rights. Like, that's not the end of the sentence. The end of the sentence is the Bill of Rights in asserting your uh, against the overreach of the government. Like the entire Bill of Rights is all about it's all about saying, hey, don't, if you think that your government can do this, it's not in the Constitution. But just to be crystal clear, these are things they cannot do. They may not do. That's what it's all about. It's just very clear with the Constitution. I should probably post that, the uh, my Constitution quick and dirty show from way back when. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The 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 Bill of Rights is was kind of a prophylactic measure to make sure that people knew that they only had these enumerated powers and the cornerstone of the Bill of Rights being the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, which are super important, both of them, not just the Tenth Amendment, but also the Ninth, which talks about us. Um, <laughs> But, you know, n no one follows that. I and liked Patrick Henry, who objected to the Constitution and because it was totally hijacking of the Articles of Confederation. But he I believe it was he who did not want it to say at all anything about we the people, because he said that made us subjects what it, it should remain a, a federation of states and your relationship to your state is something that you can decide at the state level, but the federal government should have no direct relationship to the people. I thought that was an interesting nuance. <laughs> so my fifth grade teacher, uh, we had a relatively good conversation like later on in, in my life, but she stopped talking to me because after Trump became president, I was having a conversation with someone who knows a little bit more about the constitution. And I'd said, well, no, he's not my president because I don't have a president, I'm not the federal government. Nice. And, and she she got so mad, dude. Like, she, he is your president. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, he doesn't preside over you. Exactly. He's not my president. None of them ever have been. And I think, actually, the Articles, articles of Confederation make it clear he was the president because he presided over Congress for a year, right? Isn't that how I, it see, I don't. I don't know too much about the Articles of Confederation. I just reread it yesterday because, <laughs> and I, I'm going to tell you something I read in it. This is totally on a tangent, but it's Friday. So, and there's a DPP tonight, which you are going to help me co-host along with Fat Mitch is going to come in for a cameo. And, uh, and we have a Zoom party next Saturday, which I hope that you will be a part of as well. And so I just wanted to read this thing that I never got to yesterday, the article, Article 8. Um, it's that it says all charges of war and all other expenses that shall be incurred for the common defense or general welfare. We all hate the general welfare thing, but this is in the Articles of the Confederation. It says anything allowed by the United States in Congress assembled shall be defrayed out of a common treasury, which shall be supplied by the several states in proportion. This is a good part in proportion to the value of all land within each state granted to or surveyed for any person as such land and the buildings and improvements thereon shall be estimated according to such mode as the United States and Congress assembly, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this, I didn't even know this was in there, but I had already invented it. And I'm going <laughs> to, I know that sounds crazy, but this is what I had. So I was like, what would be a fair way to tax if any, if anything could be a fair way to tax? And my conclusion was, well, what are you actually paying for? You're actually paying for mutual defense, right? So you, what, what are you defending? Your, your person and your property. That's it. Don't touch me or my stuff. If, the, if there's any extension of that and it's like a governance thing, that's it. So you should have a poll tax, which, of course, people consider to be like wildly racist. <laughs> you know, poll tax, because wh how much does it cost? Like, so you show up at the if you want to vote for how this thing is done, you pay for the protection that supposedly you're getting in return. And then you would do a property tax and that it would be proportional. So like if Warren Buffett and Bill Gates own 50 percent of the land in this country, 
why do I have to pay for the Air Force that protects it, especially since they go out of their way being belligerent to other countries or undermining other countries, creating these crises, or at least bribing our government officials to create these crises? Again, little 9-11 talk later. Um, <laughs> you, you know, so I always like, why should I pay for the protect their stuff? Why, why should I pay out of how much I produce? I go to an office, same as the secretary, and we do our thing and we go home. I use the same road, same amount of time. Why should I pay 10 times? The, you know, the tax gap is way greater than the wealth gap, by the way. They're like, yeah. what's the CEO versus the secretary is whatever, like 40 times. But the CEO's taxes versus the secretary is like 400 times. It's like, I mean, maybe not that much, but it's much, much bigger. <laughs> but it makes no sense. Like, what do you use? What do you use? You use, I even thought like contract enforcement. These You can pay fees for that. Pay fees to get, you know, whatever. Don't get, let one, me go ranting on the libertarian <laughs> stuff. There was one guy I knew um, who his idea was that if you want it, you the, they have to essentially put forth a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, so if there's a law, there has to be a crowdfunding campaign. And if, if it makes the certain amount of money that you need to fund it, then it goes through. Otherwise, it comes back. That's how the budget of Stanford, I went to Stanford as a graduate student, um, that's how they did the budget. So if you wanted to have a, you know, the, the concert network, the concert network was on the ballot and it said how much it would cost and the people would have to vote for it or not vote yeah. for, it. I mean, granted their parents were paying the tuition. I don't know how they, <laughs> I don't, I don't know exactly how it worked, but they had like a given budget and you had to say how you wanted it allocated. And you know, it's democracy, which is like not my favorite thing, but um, but yeah, it's not a terrible idea. Yeah. A couple of other points on this. I wanted to point out that the CEO of Jurgens, I think it's the manufacturer of like uh whatever skincare products, has about 450 employees in Cleveland, Chicago, and Los Angeles. The president Jack Schrone said, we will support the individual with what they want to do with their body, whether it's being tested or getting the vaccine. I think what he was trying to say is he's not, he doesn't really like want to mandate to people to get the vaccine. And I just thought maybe it's like not a bad idea for us. I'm not into the cancel culture, but not to support people who champion the rights of their employees to exercise their own judgment when it comes to their own health. And maybe support the one, you know, not support yeah. the ones who. I mean, we have to vote with our dollars in one way or another, you know. So, I mean, if, uh, you know, I'm not a big boycott guy, but, you know, when I hear, um, what was it? Uh, recently, Match.com, Lyft, and several other places were like, oh, since the, the abortion ban in Texas, we're going to put together a fund so that people drive like Lyft was drivers who live in Texas. If they want abortions, we'll pay for them to get out of state to get that abortion or and match.com was doing something very similar. And I was just like, you know, I don't need match.com, um, <laughs> but I, I don't want to use Lyft anymore because I feel like my money was going towards abortion. So do you feel like Lyft and match Lyft was part of it? Yeah. Well, that it was the CEO of Lyft that the, said oh. that. So, Ugh. well, I, I, you know, I loved that Travis Kalanick from Uber, even though he was a prickly jerk, because I believe that the reason he got canceled in that way was this Operation Grey Bull, where he was trying to foil the efforts of the government to use their data to whatever. And he just like wouldn't do it. And I tried to figure out like the moment that he went from like a, a lovable prickly jerk to a prickly jerk who had to go. And it was pretty yeah. much like that moment. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to add that this Schrone of Jurgens said he estimated that about 60% of his workers are vaccinated and many others have the antibodies because they were infected by the virus itself. That gives you way better, way, way better uh, protection. So, I mean, you can argue about how long it lasts, but I don't think people argue about the spectrum of a vaccinated versus a like, I'm not even going to call it naturally immune person because I think it's a bioweapon, but I think COVID was a bioweapon. I think it's like yeah. hard to get everybody to get it. So they have to inject it into people's arms. So I think it's the same thing. I was like, oh, I got COVID. So I don't need the vaccine. I'm like, but that means I just have that, whatever the hell that thing is in me, <laughs> whatever. And people want to know if remote workers are going to be exempt. So if you have a thousand workers, they're all remote. 
do you still have to obey that rule? Um, that would encourage the remote working thing, which I think is another piece of the agenda. Well, I, I mean, and, and it's one of those things that uh, I, I have no firm answer on that purely because of you, you heard the story about the guy at, at Rutgers. I believe it was last yeah. last week yeah. who can't finish his degree because he didn't take the vaccine and he's doing fully virtual classes. Right. But they said because he could pop up in a classroom at any time, it's not okay. But a lot of these places, and maybe this is going to dovetail at some point, but we were covering before any of this ever happened that people, uh, some schools were giving their kids and their athletes, especially apps. And what they would do is say, Hey, if you go to the game, the football game, we need bodies and seats. We will monitor your phone to make sure you're there for the whole time. And then you get whatever, like a, a coupon for a burger or something. Yeah. So there, and they would say like they would take, they were taking attendance by having people take care of their phones into the classrooms. So yeah. I'm not encouraging that at all, but I would wonder if there is a way to just accommodate people. If, if these people are gung ho and getting the vaccine and showing up and blah, 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 maybe they could, or not, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but they, they had, there's always like a little detail that makes their rule kind of seem sensible. Actually, they, I think they're even giving up on the details that make their rules seem sensible, but it's funny because my father always told me he would object to absolutely everything based on principle. He was like, I, this is not constitutional. It should not be a law. Um, I remember scientific research was one of the things, but he would even say like social security, Medicare, Medicaid, all of that stuff is like, you cannot give your control to the government. They cannot be trusted. And I feel like this is the one moment in time. I kind of feel like this is why Jesus showed up when he did is that like all road, roads led to Rome. Like it was that one moment in time where he could actually disseminate the message broadly. Like as soon as it was possible for him to come, he came and I feel like as soon as it was possible for them to have a worldwide, like total control mechanism in place, they launched the the operation that would would usher that era in so they could never, ever be trusted. But now that you have everybody, like everything from the apartment you live in, evictions, rental, stimmy checks, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, um, OSHA regulations, keeping people safe, antitrust, anything, everything and anything, all the federal funding that they take your taxes and they push it back to your state or city, all of that stuff is being leveraged by the feds to control your what's flowing through your veins. Like it is, it is uh, robbing you of the most fundamental liberties. And it is always good to remember that because government only exists, depending on whether you're left or right, what, based on people's fiscal or physical insecurities. It must make sure you are fiscally and physically insecure at all times, always beholden to them for your, mm -hmm. for your sustenance, for your safety. And, and that's how they control you, coupled with a complete fear of death and a uh, absence of belief in the afterlife. So like all your eggs are in this basket, they control the basket and you're like, well, I can, I can starve to death now, or I can, I can comply and hope for the best. I mean, I just, I feel like all of this is because we've lost our way ideologically and I blame yeah. things like Obama and Trump for that. Yeah. Well, the, the good thing is um, there's a running, I found a running map of states that have decided to tell Joe Biden to go, this is this is the clean version to go fluff himself <laughs> over this over this law this uh, these executive orders. Uh, there are twenty seven states that are colored in on this map. Seventeen wow. Republican governors have made strong statements, um, but like it's 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 the the common ones you think of Texas, uh, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana was a holdout for a minute. The most recent one is Kentucky, but it, if you it's it looks like flyover states in the South at this point, but it's still more than half of the states in the union that are saying this is not okay, and so that makes me happy. I love if I'm going to have this government, I want the federalism. That would be a majority if yeah. if they had if they had written we the states instead of we the people, then the right. whole thing would have been different. 
So, um, but it's not, the problems aren't just state to state. It's also country to country. Am I right? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other article that popped up is uh, France is probably the biggest example of this so far, um, especially for tourism, but they have decided to ban unvaccinated Americans from entering the country. But not unvaccinated Nigerians? <laughs> I don't know. So apparently the way it works is they have uh, different color scales. Um, so they, the United States was in the green, in the green list, and it was just moved down to orange. And as we know, orange means bad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, true. True. So yeah, it's uh, the orange effectively prohibits non-essential travel to France for unvaccinated visitors. So the United States is now orange. Um, they, uh, the Denmark and the Netherlands, Netherlands have also recently up updated their restriction requiring proof of vaccination for U.S. travelers. Uh, S Sweden actually just banned all U.S. arrivals, regardless of vaccination status. Really. Yeah, so Sweden's the hardest one on this. But I have a very if, good Swedish friend, and I haven't seen her since this started because she's. I'm sure she's not allowed out. out. Yeah, she, that's what she says, but I, I'm not sure what she means exactly by that. But she was, she's totally, she lived with me for a while. And she just went from being like afraid of guns and pro like national health care. Then she went back to Sweden and she was just like, we. America is like rich and clean and healthy <laughs> and like, of course you want a gun. That's why we're like, I can't walk down the street in my city. Like this is crazy. So now she's <laughs> locked in there. She's just like, ah, oh. so I'd love to like rescue her, but I don't know. So I haven't been following Sweden, but she's, we definitely aren't seeing each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're attacking. Um, it, it's, it almost seems like an attack on a different. So a lot of the, strategy it seems to get people vaccinated in america have been like with this law uh from yesterday the uh, executive order it seems to be attacking the lower income people the people who can't afford to lose their jobs um i i would be surprised if people hold out if they don't go after welfare recipients in some way that that would be something that i would i would see i could see happening but, you know, France, Sweden going to these other places, this is that's an elite attack. So maybe they're trying to to weed out those uh, football players who don't want to get the vaccination and their wives want to go to France. Interesting, because, yeah, most of it has been totally regressive from start to finish. I have thought that it's from even the jobs like people who could work from home are not blue collar workers that's for sure they're not people who work yeah. with their hands they're not waitresses and stuff so i've always felt like it was a very regressive from the start but there is good news at least in in the state that i reside in not my home state don't get confused i am a florida florida man by choice but i'm an alabamian at heart oh um, i didn't know that yeah i'm, I'm you living Birmingham. in pennsylvania for a while I was, I'd moved. So I've done a lot of moving, but it was, it went Alabama, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Florida. Right. And you're loving Florida years. I, I, I do. I do like Florida. I'll, I'll always miss uh, Alabama and Georgia because it looks and smells like home. Yeah. You'll and have to get back there someday. That's, that's, that's the, the long-term plan. Oh, great. But um, so in Florida, DeSantis or as Stephen King and, uh, I can never remember his name. Sulu from Star Trek like to call him Death oh, Santis. Takei. Yeah, Takei. George Takei. Yeah, <laughs> I can never remember his name. It's like Decay. <laughs> okay. They call him Death Santis, and it's the nerdiest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. These people should not be given Twitter. Um, <laughs> but uh, they have been mad at uh, DeSantis for saying that schools could not mandate masks. And so a lot of people freaked out. They, they sent it to the federal courts. The court ruled that he could not ban mask mandates in schools. But today, it turns out, the, the courts decided that, yes, in fact, he could. So in Florida, if you're a parent, if you don't want your kid wearing a mask to school, you have a little more freedom in that way. What, what court? Is a state court? Uh, a state appeals court, yeah. Okay, because... I mean, if the president can mandate vaccines, I would think that I, 
a governor, I mean, of course, the laws in the state are, di- are peculiar to the state, but the governor should be able to to say that you you can't mandate mandate the mask because what I guess his argument is that you it goes beyond it's like kind of a my body my choice thing where like it's a yeah. public school and right because see the thing is can a private school mandate it because he was saying private I think Florida and te- Florida had the thing where private places couldn't like ask for vax status or whatever but right. I don't I don't like when private in, in private establishments just have any schools. any laws at all public schools yeah now that would that would be good because the public schools you know yeah they man you have to go to school so right that's what they say that you have to go to school so you should yeah i mean it, it just that opens a whole another ball of wax yeah so this just covers public schools all right uh, there was one more thing i saw out of florida that um it was a video it had no explanation whatsoever it had like some words across the screen but it didn't give the context of the story at all it was a video of first responders and the school nurse this is what the blurb said uh restarting the heart of a 17 year old boy they used a defib machine or whatever did you see this he collapsed in school so i posted that thinking wow that's weird like when was the last time you heard of like just some kid like collapsing in school, having his heart restarted by fucking the paddles, and then I that's not even what they did. I thought the oh, defibrillators what? just fixed the fixed the pattern of the heart, not restarted it. Am I wrong? Oh, I think they restarted, but I I don't hmm. know. You know what? It was it was not an easy video to follow. It's in my Twitter feed at Monica Pressure. I'm happy to hear what people think about that. Uh. So, but in the feed, somebody posted an, 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 uh, like a screenshot from a Twitter feed of Telegram, Telegraph, the UK newspaper. And I actually tracked down the article from the newspaper. So it was not like Photoshopped or anything. And it was an article just, just came out recently that teen boys are six times more likely to be hospitalized by the vaccine than by COVID. Wow. Yeah, and, because wasn't it? I believe it, teen, but teen yeah, boys who were the getting the heart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes, and I actually knew a boy a long, long time ago who died of uh, pericarditis from a cold. Wow. Yeah, it was the only time I'd ever heard of it in my whole life. So when I heard this was happening with the vaccine, it was just more evidence to me that you know the the illness and the vaccine are the same. You know, the vaccine is just you know what I mean. Like it's just. Uh, Whew, crazy. So let me, uh, before we get to the last big story of the free 30, I want to do a little 9-11 talk. Not too much, though. It's very disturbing. So I want to tell you about what we're going to talk about in the patron 15. I've got some feedback from patrons on yesterday's show and on a, on a show from a couple of days ago, including someone who's disappointed in what I said about the vaccine yesterday. So I'm going to tell you <laughs> about that. And another who wants to talk about ICU capacity. So I, I I'll give you their, their feedback to me and my, my right back at them in the patron 15. And did we talk about the 200 headless goats floating down the Chattahoochee river? We didn't, but but I saw the tweet. We're going to, (laughs) we are going to, so buckle up. And I would like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's show. This is something, uh, Labor of Love from Molly. And we've got a little, uh, it's very hard to say, gadolinium. So I pre-recorded it. Let's hear We are excited to bring this extended shout out to you from Molly. She's a patron saint and a big fan of the show, and she has a very important message she'd like to get out there. Molly wants people to know that there's a toxic heavy metal called gadolinium in the contrast injection you get when you get an MRI, and some people have a devastating reaction to it. You can find out more about that by looking into the experience of Chuck Norris and his wife Gina, who, like Molly, are trying to raise awareness of this serious issue. Gadolinium is a rare earth mineral that's not found isolated in nature. Yet because of MRIs, it's now in our environment and can accumulate in our bodies. The long-term effects of using this heavy metal in the millions of MRIs that are done every year are not yet known. Molly just wants people to know the risks involved in getting this injection and to learn more about the possible impact this practice may have on us all. Knowledge is power. So learn more about gadolinium in MRIs at Molly's website, www.mrdi.com. 
That's www.mridye.com. I've gotten many reports of people who felt very well educated after uh, looking through MRIDYE.com, MRIDye.com. All the information is there for you to make your own choices and uh, get a little education, little threads to pull on. And so we thank Molly and we also ask you to support this show. What we do, mostly it's free. And, uh, but we go out of our way. I'm not a big fan of the value for value thing where, you know, if you think you're getting value, just pitch in to the kitty. I, my goal is to spread the word, to spread community, to help people understand propaganda, to restore a little critical thinking into the public discourse. So mostly everything we do is free. We, in order to allow us to do this full time, which is what we do, we have to, in my case, contribute to the household. Binkley's got to pay his own bills. So we offer a lot of extra content, a lot of bonus content of the same quality as the free content. Um, sometimes it's got a little more personality to it, but mostly it's just we, we want to give people something that they find worthwhile and we do that through Patreon and Rockfin. So patreon.com slash propaganda report where you can get all of our content in your on your favorite podcasting platform, plus some other stuff, shout outs, and you'll have to look at the tiers to decide what's right for you. And then on Rockfin, so the only thing we don't offer on Patreon, Rockfin requires that we add some exclusive content. So on Rockfin, we do some deep dives and I consider them to be worth the $10 it costs to join Rockfin. But that's not all you get when you join Rockfin. You get like just, it's probably thousands of hours a month of exclusive content. And um, even we are the mad ones. Cam Harless is on Rockfin. But uh, I'm asking you to join rockfin.com slash propaganda report. <laughs> and, and anytime yes. they watch my stuff and your stuff, it helps both of us. Oh, yeah, that's so. true. That's so true. Maybe, yeah, it's a little tricky how it works, but the way Rockfin does it, they basically distribute royalties to people who... So if you join for me and watch Cam, he gets paid for it. So they don't like us to say it sounds like Netflix because they really distribute almost all of it. They actually distribute all of it. That's yeah. I don't I don't know how they, they keep it going, but it's a lot of bang for the buck and they're not going to take us down as soon as Patreon's going to. So there's that. And uh, anyway, so... Without further ado, on to the last big story of the Free 30. And that is, it is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 tomorrow. And all I wanted to point out, a couple of things, three things. Biden just renewed the national emergency, issued an executive order that was established September 14th, 2001. So I would just like to understand, like, do they have to redefine emergency? Because isn't an emergency emergent? Yeah. Isn't it when you couldn't actually, like, get laws in place or whatever? 20 years? I mean, in what time warp is 20 years an emergency? Well, they create new emergencies all the time. And they, I mean, I believe that's the same um, authorization that they've used to go into every single country and wage the war on terror for the past 20 years. I think they've tweaked it once or twice, but I used to go bananas because they would, the original one said it was the, like an emergency use authorization of force or whatever. And it said anybody who could even remotely be considered having participated in the attack on nine 11 were the people that they were going to go after. But, what actually happened, it's the Sh Sunni. I think it's the Shia who we go after over there and the Sunni who were part of 9-11. <laughs> so like the thing is like the Saudi Arabians and stuff were the ones who did 9-11. Yet yeah. we always go after the enemy. So right. I don't it's, know. <laughs> it was just, the it's just backwards. Like it, it when even, even by the reading of that, of the emergency authorization, it's like, no, 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 those were not on the other side in 9-11. You can't use it to justify that. You certainly can't use it to justify going into Syria, but they did. 
it's just amazing the the moderate rebels that they arm just happen to be al nusra front which is al qaeda in iraq i mean it's like literally partnering with the enemy that yes yes that was themselves. it yeah that was absolutely what? it yeah that was absolutely <laughs> it yes we partnered with al qaeda that's right that's what it was it's amazing it's yeah. amazing so i think they might have changed the wording after that they've only changed the wording once or twice if if at all but i think they did and they did it under obama and um by the way people don't not just to pick on Biden, the emergency orders, he's renewing the emergency orders Trump put in for COVID. Yeah. And you can say, well, he had to do that, but he didn't have to do that. Those are states. Those are states' rights. 100%. Yeah. Health is under the police powers of the 10th Amendment. 100%. Absolutely. So he never needed to do that. And uh, so, so here's what I think about the Obama-Trump continuum is that what they did, what Obama did, so it used to be like conspiracy theorists were Democrats who knew that Republicans did 9-11. Mm -hmm. And Obama silenced those people. He also silenced the people who were vociferous anti-war advocates. So he silenced the anti-war left, which was the only good thing about the left, maybe yeah. drug rights, like recognizing God's gift to man in the form of like weed and stuff and... Not, you know what I mean? Like that literally God's gift to man. Like I I'm totally for gun rights, but man had to intervene and take piles of sticks and rocks and stuff and make guns out of it. Like God just like threw friggin' weed seeds everywhere. I mean, obviously <laughs> you don't want us to have to work too hard for that. And it's, and they're, it's curative. Like these are medicines that have been banned. Like our access to natural medicines that like, grow in our own backyard. Yeah. It's been prohibited by the government. And, uh, Obama was uh, in the forefront of that. That was like the only other thing that was okay about the left, in my opinion. Yeah, well, and it's <laughs> it's funny because I was talking to uh, Jessica um, from the sh from the Mad Ones, um, my show, and she was talking about how there is a weed that grows in most people's backyards called lemon balm, and in a study that's very open, it showed that the effects of lemon lemon balm could um, essentially not, I won't say heal, but very much lessen the effects of AIDS and HIV. And it's something that grows in your backyard. And, but the, the pharma pharmaceutical companies that are tied to the government don't want you to know that. You, you know, what might be the most curative thing ever. And it, and it, it, it's, it's almost like, this is not a, not a fair comparison because it's just a horrible thing. But I always think like the abortion thing, hmm. it's like the mom, does it like that's not cool and uh with the it's dandelions like yeah well you spend all your time like trying to weed like i always think this with downs kids that's what i was thinking about the abortion thing it's like you have this in my case very cool person and people don't realize it so they weed them out right you know and all because and, of some french king back in the day wanting to to show off how he could have so much land and not have to farm it what yeah, that's that's apparently the um, the origin of the lawn was a French king flexing his land and not farming on it. Wow. Was, in in our episode with Nick Bacone, we talked about how one of the interesting things that they found out is that the, the some of the plants that grow in your backyard and around you grow in overabundance of the different vitamins and minerals that you need in your body personally. So they actually the plants in some way feed off of our it's like you know mo when when moms have babies babies get, get sick yeah. or mom gets sick antibodies are shared yeah. through the breast milk exactly. it's a very similar thing with plants and so your your yard is trying to oh, take care of wow. you and you're cutting it all down because wow. you want some grass that won't do anything but give you allergies and they say that this is the largest crop in the united states is just you know lawn yep Maybe we should make it into wheatgrass and eat it, but you can't spray all those chemicals all over it. Yeah. Wheatgrass, like <laughs> press it. And But dandelions, absolutely great. You can, um, a patron Stella re recommended a Dorothy Hall book from the 70s, which I got. And I got to the dandelion section. I was like, I got to get some of this. And then I saw it all over the internet. It's like being like uh, a way to keep spike proteins from penetrating cell membranes and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know the dandelion is world renowned for its healative properties um i, I got one more thing. well just dandelions elderberries lemon balm the earth is we're part of it this is a part of who we are 
it responds to us, we respond to it, and if we respond to it correctly, it helps us. But instead, we want synthetic drugs. Well, I don't think we want them, but <laughs> we're told to want them. So anyway, I did also want to say, like, on the right, the problem is that uh, whereas Obama destroyed those things that were good, I, Trump never emphasized fiscal responsibility. As a matter of fact, he was an example of the opposite. He modeled the opposite behavior and never championed the Bill of Rights. And I feel like he really should have. And uh, so mad at those guys. But I feel like these are examples of the contrary law of democracy. This is in my glossary. Do you know what the contrary law of democracy is? Tell me. Contrary law of democracy is that you will not get what you fear the most from the person you fear the most. You will get it from the person you trust the most. Mm -hmm. So you are going to get gun control from a Republican. Hashtag, it will take a Republican. Yep. And so you're going to get war from the Democrats and you're going to get infrastructure from Republicans. <laughs> yeah. And you're and, well, because, you know, uh, it, it's my it's semi minor. But Trump took away bump bump stocks. Majorly, Nixon took away the gold standard. Absolutely. And instituted price and wage controls. Could you imagine <laughs> that Nixon? I, and again, my dad always about the principles. He always would would not curse, but he would denounce Nixon and people would be, he's a re Republican. And my father didn't care at all about that. He was like <laughs> always been, uh, considered himself a conservative, but he wouldn't tolerate that. He opened up China. He was like, those people have slave labor. You can't, you, if you're, if you're going to open that up, you have to either have totally free trade everywhere or boycott those places. But you know, anyway, maybe that's a personal choice, but Ah, so with that, <laughs> I would like to give a shout out. I gave a call out for a shout out and I got a few good ones and many actually. So it's going to take me a while to get through them all. But Jeremy says he wanted to shout out the Discord server for the Propaganda Report. He says it's a fantastic group. He's never seen arguments or disrespect, even though everyone there has their own opinions. It is. It was actually established by a listener, a, a DPP favorite, Ism Kant. It's you can get to it. He established a URL to get to it easily. DPPdiscord.com. D-P-P-D-I-S-C-O-R-D.com. You just have to you have to sign up for Discord. It doesn't cost anything. The invitation is open to all. They have little sub servers. It's very cool. And there's an after party on Discord. Tonight, we're gonna have a DPP from 8 to 10 Eastern. And then people just go over to the Discord and uh, keep the party going. It's really a nice little thing that we've got working there. And uh, with that, on to the Patron 15. And have a fantastic rest of your day, as Binkley would say.